Hi, my name is Liz Schlemer, and this is a video from IME 443 Facilities Planning and Design at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. This particular video is covering many charts and diagrams that are useful in a facilities designing process. The um, context is always so important when we're doing engineering, but it's also very important to do excellent engineering and use correct um, tools like charts and diagrams, and that's what we'll be going over today. So in the process of doing a facility design, you need to collect data and document the data. And in fact, some companies have many of the charts and diagrams already documented, which will be an aid in your designing process. So we're going to be really covering sort of the three processes um, after you've defined the product, after you've defined what the objective of the facilities redesign or design is, then you'll be doing using charts and diagrams to help you understand the primary support activities, the interrelationships between the departments and the space requirements. So I'm just going to go through many of these, this whole list of charts and diagrams. Time studies is actually covered in a different video, but it is definitely one of the things that um, helps you to understand the particular operation um, that you're studying. An operations process chart is the first thing, and um, actually these symbols are used in several different charts. If you remember, there's five symbols. The circle indicates that there's an operation where actually there is some value added in the processes that, that, are, that, you're, that are taking up time and space. The next is transportation. This means something needs to be moved from one place to another, and it can either be moved by a person or a conveyor in a material handling situation or any other kind of material handling. Storage is the upside down triangle. This indicates things are waiting to be unprocessed. Delay is another waiting, except it is sort of um, in, a, in a way that they're not actually in a storage position, but they're in a um, sort of a place where you are gonna be doing the next operation. Um, often delay is, in, is seen as a non-value added activity, as is transportation often. Inspection, which is indicated by a square, means that you actually are adding value to the product by ensuring some kind of quality in processes or products. Now, an operation process chart uses two of these symbols, operation and inspection, and it's definitely a big picture of all the operations necessary to make one unit of production. Um, and we'll look at an example of that. This is an example of a, um, the process associated with making a telephone um, stand. And the um, things to notice from this particular um, chart is that everything kind of moves from upper left to lower right. So that's the way people read and that's the way this chart should be read. In addition, each of the parts of a particular finished product are indicated in uh, along the top in a vertical line. At, those are the manufactured parts. The other parts that are purchased are horizontal lines down at a different place. Like these are the, the purchase parts that are indicated as a horizontal line. The main part that you're working onto, which are the things that are going to be assembled, the base or the main por portion of it is always to the right, and it's often the thing that has the longest um, processing times. So when we look at um, this particular in detail of making the sills, we also have recorded here the time necessary for each operation and each inspection. And we have a, um, a, oops, a simple description of each of the um, operations. In addition, we have a numbering system that refers to uh, another document that actually indicates the actual procedure for this operation and the kinds of tools that you'll be needed and the drawings. Now another thing besides operations process chart is a parts list. In a parts list you just list all of the items that go into a finished part product. And this is um, important because you need to know do I have everything and where am I getting it from. The uh, sort of an additional thing besides the part list is known as a bill of material or a bomb. And these actually list all of the parts, but it also has uh, the final products and the subassemblies listed also. So all the subassemblies are listed on here, not just the parts. Um, 
And then the next thing we'll look at is a assembly diagram, which is assembly chart, which shows the ways that things um, are assembled together and indicates what goes into next part. So this is very helpful in the process of assembling. Lots of companies should have assembly charts. Um, SolidWorks creates this for you when you're making an assembly diagram. And also some, um, SolidWorks also creates a bomb for you. Exploded assembly. for um, a production process. Um, this next thing is a route sheet and routing sheets are also quite important in facilities design because they definitely show you the, the order of the procedures that um, a manufacturing engineer has developed. So in this case we have a particular order of things that need to be done and operator, operator sign off for each of these. Um, and it, in, this is to make a particular product they have to go through all of these these steps. This is super important in facilities design. Multiple activity chart. Um, I'm sure you remember doing this possibly in 223 where you have a time that's in a vertical um, axis and then along each column are the operator and the various machines and how in this case it would be how an operator is operating three machines but it also um, ha it can be any kind of multiple activity that's going along where you track multiple things going on at the same time whether multiple operators or multiple machines so you can kind of see the load and the idle activity. A flow process chart uses the five symbols we, we had before, but also records time and distance so that we can um, add up and summarize all of those, the times and the distance for a particular process. It's a way of us for tracking these things. And we, we circle whether we're following it, whether it's a proposed method or a or a uh, present method. It also circles whether we're call following worker, material, or machine because all of those could be different. And again, these um, these symbols indicate um, what's happening in each of these steps. We look for things about delay because we might say, well, is there a way to um, shorten the time such that by eliminating some of the delays? A summary. Um, a flow chart flowchart takes the same material that's that's listed on the um, previous chart and overlays this onto a floor plan so we can see how things are moving throughout a facility and that gives us some visual nature associated with um, the sort of the crowdedness of particular areas or the different processes that are going on. This is also used sometimes in, in relation to a spaghetti diagram, which is just the lines where people are moving and not, um, not without the particular symbols on it. Again, this is a good visualization of how things are moving through a facility. A Gantt chart might be the next thing, and um, this Gantt chart is often used in project planning. I know that you're familiar with that. Um, but it is also it could also be used in production processes where you see how things are moving through particular um, departments. Um, another so this is the one where it's moving through particular departments and you look through where we are in the process. So often in a Gantt chart you have you have a line that indicates um, your present position and then you can visually see what's been completed and what needs to be done and you can see what's ahead and what's behind schedule. Pareto chart, I know that many of you are familiar with this. The idea that the top 20% of the um, of the causes or the, the categories um, account for 80% of the processes. So. Um, this is a really, really good way of narrowing down the things you need to look at as an industrial engineer, to look at the things that are causing the most um, issues in your analysis. And the last thing is a value stream nap. I, I know you're familiar with this from IME 223. It and actually is a very complex um, chart that shows many pieces of information, time and information travel and physical travel and different people involved in the process. And it, it can be various levels of complexity on a value stream map. This one is quite complex. So I hope that gives you an overview of the various kinds of charts and diagrams that you can use in um, industrial engineering analysis.